watch. Salve. Last week, we learnt how good the Romans were at fighting, but perhaps they were even better at building things. The legions came and went, but the buildings seemed to go on standing forever. Take these city walls, for instance. Well, they look as good as new, don't they? Strong enough to keep out any attacker. As well as building good, strong walls, the Romans built good, strong roads, like this one. This is the Appian Way, and it leads south from Rome. The Romans called this the Queen of the Roads because it was the first really big road they'd ever built. But it certainly wasn't the last. If you put all the roads that Romans ever built in a long line, it would stretch ten times around the world. Quite a number of them were built in Britain, and you might find that there's one somewhere near your school. A lot of the Appian Way has been resurfaced to make it easier for cars to drive on it. But every now and then you come to a stretch of road which is just as the Romans left it. Like here. It's like the Pompeii streets, isn't it? The big blocks of stone and the grooves left by the cartwheels. All the roads were built by the Roman soldiers, and as you can see, they're very straight. That's because they knew the shortest distance between two places was a straight line. So they decided to build the roads as straight as they possibly could. That way, you get there quicker. It was thanks to the roads that the Roman armies could move faster than their enemies. This was one of the reasons why the Romans were so good at winning wars. Soldiers weren't the only people to use the roads. There was also a Roman postal service that carried important letters and messages across Europe. A road is for people to travel along. The Romans also built roads for water to travel along. I'm standing by the remains of one now. It's called an aqueduct. Now, the Romans used a lot of water, about 200 million gallons a day, in fact. And the water they needed came from some hills just outside Rome. The Romans had no drills and bulldozers, but they were expert engineers, and they knew exactly how to make the most of simple cranes and wooden scaffolding. The hills that provided Rome's water were about 30 kilometres away. To build an aqueduct that long might take 20 years. And you can understand why when you see it marching across the countryside in an endless row of arches. The water was carried in a square pipe on the top of the aqueduct. And here, in the centre of Rome, you can still see sections of the pipe, high enough to stop people stealing the water or poisoning it. There's a certain shape on these aqueducts that you can't help noticing, isn't there? An arch shape. This is another secret the Romans discovered. If you build something with an arch, you can make it light and very strong. Wherever the Romans have been, you can see arches still standing. As well as the arched aqueducts, they built arched bridges, triumphal arches, and arched buildings. An arch shape is very strong, and I can prove it with these two pieces of card. If I lay them flat on these two bricks, and then put some coins on top, it collapses, but 
if I bend one piece into the arch shape and lay the other piece flat on top and then place the coins on top it's strong enough to support it Here's one of Rome's most famous arched buildings. It's a stadium called the Colosseum. Inside the Colosseum, men called gladiators fought against each other to entertain the spectators. Sometimes they fought with wild animals, such as lions and panthers. It was a cruel sport, and many people and animals were killed. Not far from the Colosseum, just beyond the main aqueduct in fact, was an even bigger stadium that was 600 metres long. It had very few arches and that's one reason why there's very little left of it today. Here I am standing on the site of the Circus Maximus. The Circus Maximus was the biggest sports stadium ever built. It held seats for over a quarter of a million people and it was the home of the chariot race. Just imagine the scene with that huge crowd roaring their support for their favourite driver. Away they go! course. This is where the chariots came round to go back up again and it was going round the corner that was the most dangerous part of the race. This is where most of the crashes happened. Dangerous business chariot racing. It's a bit like our motor racing today. Many of the drivers used to get killed in the races, but the ones who survived made a great deal of money. In fact, we know of one driver who made over three million pounds. Well, now it's time for Watch to go to the races. We're not gonna have any accidents today, just a lot of fun for everybody. And instead of horses, we're gonna be using children. What we're going to do is give them horses' heads and that'll make them run faster, with a bit of luck. Have you all got your horses' names yet, by the way? Yes. What's yours? Hurricane. Hurricane. Victor. Victor. Streak. Streak. Lightning. And Lightning. Oh, good. All good, speedy-sounding names. OK, Hurricane, here's your head. Thank you. One for Victor. Thank you. One for Streak. Thank you. And last but not least, one the lightning, there we are. Let's have a look and see what they look like on. Oh, very good. We've also tied ribbons round their middles to act as reins. And at the back here is Rebecca, our charioteer, to hold the reins. The charioteer has a crash helmet, just like the, the real ones. And here is a cardboard dagger. Now, the charioteers had to have daggers so that if they crashed, they could cut themselves free. Right, are you all set and ready to go? Yes! Right, off you go then and warm up with the others. Off there you go. We've got several teams running today, and as you can see, they're all dressed in either red, green, white or blue. Those are the colours of the ancient chariot races, and each member of the public would have his own favourite colour that he supported. OK, let's go and have a look at the stadium. Hello, can I come in? Thank you. Well, here we are at Watch's Circus Minimus. We have a triumphal arch at one end, just like the Circus Maximus. And although we don't quite have a quarter of a million people watching, we're not doing too badly. Now then, are you a well-behaved crowd? Yeah! 
Oh, you better be, because we've got plenty of soldiers standing on guard to sort out any trouble, so you'd better be on your very best behaviour. Oh, here come the teams, so let's give them a cheer. Hooray! While they're getting ready, I'll just explain to you about these eggs. Each team is going to run five times around the course. And each time they complete a lap, I'm going to take one of these eggs away. That's what the ancient Romans used to do, and we're going to do the same thing, so that everybody knows exactly how much farther they've got to run. Well, they're all ready down at the starting line. To start the race, we really ought to have the Emperor. But I'm afraid we don't have any Emperors handy at the moment. But if we say the magic spell, we might just be able to get Louise to appear. So let's try it, shall we? All together then. No! Romans first and Romans last. Out of the present and into the past. Hooray, I'm here. <laughs> now, I'm going to start the race in true Roman fashion by dropping the white handkerchief. Is everybody ready? Yes! Yeah! They're under starter's orders. Off we go! They're off! <laughs> They've all got away to a fine start, and they're safely around the first bend. And as they reach the end of the first lap, there seems to be very little in it. This is the makings of a fine race. The blues and whites look as though they're moving very nicely indeed. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, trouble at the corner. Down go the blues and the greens are overtaking. No wonder the green supporters are looking happy. That's a very good recovery by the red charioteer there, but as we near the halfway mark, it's the greens still making the running. The greens are looking very good indeed. Ah, oh, but wait a minute, the blues are back in the race. A brilliant comeback. Yes, the blues have come back and they're doing extremely well. My goodness, are they going to take the greens? Yes, they're going past the greens on the inside. And as we near the last lap, it's anybody's race. Blues or whites, blues or whites. And it's the Blues by a short head. Well, that was a tremendous race. In fact, you've all done so well that I'm going to give you all a prize. And we have palm leaves for the charioteer. Well done, sir. And a sugar lump each for the horses. One for you. One for you. Thank you. One for this horse. Thank you. One for this horse. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And another leaf for another brave charioteer. Thank you. While Louise is giving out the prizes, we are going to get ready for our triumphal procession. So form up in your columns, Romans, and we'll get ready to march off. That's it. Some more around here. All nice and fours, that's it. Hold high the eagles, we're marching back to Rome. Hold high the eagles, the legion's going home. Each man's a Roman, we fight with every foreman. We bow the knee to no man, and now we're marching home. We marched along the Roman road to build the British wall. We marched along the Roman road to fight the war and go. We marched along the Roman 